Hey guys, a relatively simple project for this bike turned into a nightmare. All I wanted to do was change the motors on this bike with another bike. Normally a change like that takes me about an hour. In fact, it took me three days to fix the problem. So what happened and how did I resolve it? Let's get into it. This is a crank arm that was on the bike. And what I was trying to do was use this part tool, which is a, a CWP-7 tool to remove the crank arm. And the way you do that is that this tool screws in uh, just like that. And then, and then you take the, uh, you take a wrench and you, you hold the, the big nut and screw the small nut and it will pull the crank arm right off. Now, not to make excuses, but just to explain how this problem happened, um, the way the crank attaches to the uh, motor is that this goes, the, this goes right into the shaft on the motor. And then you take, uh, you have this, uh, this bolt, which has uh, washers on it. And this bolt uh, goes right uh, into the inside of the crank. And then there's a, uh, some threads uh, on the shaft of the motor. And as you turn this bolt, it pulls the crank onto the shaft. And as you screw, uh, screw the bolt in, uh, this crank, this end is sort of a pressure fitting and it attaches really tightly onto the crank of the motor. Now, this particular bolt has a, uh, a washer. That washer typically is affixed with a, with a rubber gasket so that it won't come off. But when I unscrewed this uh, and took it out, what happened, the washer was left behind. So the washer was sitting in there like that. And when I put in the extracting tool, instead of screwing all the way in, the extracting tool did not go all the way in because the washer was preventing the extracting tool from screwing all the way in. Now I screwed it in quite a bit, but not enough. And so as a result, because it wasn't fully threaded when I pulled it out, it just, it pulled the thread, it stripped the threads out instead of pulling off the crank arm. Now at that point, I'm a guy with one heck of a problem. I've got a crank on the bike uh, that I can't get off. I tried all sorts of things that didn't work. First of all, I tried to reattach the part tool, but I had stripped out enough of the threads so that I could not uh, get a good attachment. I then tried uh, riding the bike. I rode it for about 30 miles. Uh, hopeful that maybe it would wobble itself off, but it, it didn't budge. Then I tried wedging it off uh, with a wedge, and at that point I was afraid I was going to damage the motor. Then I tried a, a two-arm bearing extractor. I could not keep it uh, perpendicular to the shaft so that it would apply pressure consistently to pull off uh, the crank. I considered buying a different extraction tool which would expand as you screwed it in, but I was convinced that I'd thripped out, stripped out enough threads so that that wouldn't work. So then I was left with one alternative, and that was to use a three-arm bearing extractor. This is a three-arm bearing extractor, and basically the way it's designed is you would attach these claws to the to the periphery of the bearing and then screw this shaft uh, down and it would pull the bearing. Now the problem with this is that trying to use this on this crank arm, there's nowhere really for it to attach. So from looking at the crank arm, uh, what I concluded was is that if I... Uh, took the arms off of the, or the jaws off, and screwed bolt, or screwed, uh, was able to screw uh, screws in here and attach it to the clamp, then maybe I'd have a way to pull it off. So what I did was, is I found three points that I felt were uh, equidistant from each other. One was right here, 
One was on the other side and the other was right here. So what I did, I drilled holes and tapped threads into those, uh, into those holes. In here is a, uh, an M6 by one. Now to make the holes, I had, uh, you know, obviously an electric drill and I had a five millimeter uh, drill bit. Once I had the holes inserted, I then was able to take the tap and go in and tap out the holes. And by the way, I'm doing all of this while it's on the bike, so it's not the easiest thing, but go in and basically, you know, tap uh, the holes uh, on the crank. Once I got the holes tapped on the crank, these holes then would be, uh, would be sufficient to support or I could screw in the, uh, the M6 uh, uh, bolts uh, on there. Now, in addition to the, uh, you know, getting the crank uh, arm ready, these have to be removed. On the bearing extractor, once you've extracted the arms, this is what you're left with, this three-point uh, attachment here and this really heavy-duty uh, uh, bolt that will be able to go in and, uh, you know, push off the arm, hopefully. Now, this bearing extractor tool has to have something that it can push against. And uh, what I concluded here was is that I needed to have a bolt, and this is not the motor, but this is a similar motor. I needed a bolt that would screw right into here and would provide a basis upon which the, uh, the bearing extractor would be able to, to push against. Now, I also went in and on the head of that bolt, I went in and, and used a drill bit, a really large drill bit, to create a little bit of a dimple so that the bearing extractor would, would fit on there and not, and not move around. Now, to create, you know, to attach the bearing extractor to the crank arm, you know, I needed to create uh, some arms to do that. And what I had was a, uh, a piece of uh, uh, steel. This is a flat bar, a one eight by one and a half, or by a half inch. Uh, the rod was originally three feet. I've used it for other things. But basically, I cut off three pieces of that flat bar equal length. And then I had to bend them so that they would uh, attach on the crank. So I had to put them in my vise and just twist them uh, and work with them to get them. And let me show you how they attached. Now, uh, once I made the, uh, the arms for the bearing extractor, and uh, attached them onto the to the crank with the six uh, uh, millimeter bolts. This is what it looks like. Now, this is the bolt I showed you earlier, which the uh, the bearing extractor is going to push against. And the way it attaches is it goes right in uh, and screws into the uh, into the the shaft in the motor. And uh, that's what the bearing extractor is going to push against. Now, I don't have any pictures of the actual uh, extraction, but what I've done, I've reattached the crank arm. And I've, uh, I'm showing here, this is the bolt. Uh, this silver thing right here is the bolt that's in the shaft in the motor. The bearing extractor is attached to the crank arm. And the... Uh, you know, the bolt on the, uh, on the bearing extractor is right in the head of the bolt that's in the motor shaft. And what would happen is, as you twist this, it will pull, uh, it will pull the, the, uh, the, uh, the crank off of the motor shaft. And uh, that's how I was ultimately able to extract the crank arm. Well, guys, there you have it. What I just showed you in this video, I want you to understand though, it took me several days. It was a terrible process. I hope it never happens to you, but if it does, hopefully this video will give you some idea about how you can proceed and, and to give you some hope that you ultimately will be able to get the crank off. At one point, I just I was about to give up. So anyway, I hope I've given you guys something to think about and I'll see you at the top.